Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I paint the Knight of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed for the Night Haunts faction of Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Everyone, welcome back to Mini Junkie. This is Jarrett. So I took some time getting around to the Knight of Shrouds and to, I think his name is Reichnor. Uh, there's a few mounted mounted um, night haunts that I was really wanting to get the horse to look good and I didn't know how I was going to go about it. I didn't know if I would go fully ghostly or try and do some cool dead skin. And in the end, to be honest, I end up going with what the Warhammer, um, like the Warhammer TV version that I think Chris Peach does in one of his tutorials um, because I think it looks the best and I kind of tried to put my own spin on it you'll see in the video and I think it looks pretty cool in the end but go ahead and follow along and see how I did this in particular I think you'll like the corroded steel effect I came up with for the like the metal helmet and the horse and the blade and things like that it's not as rusty as some of the other stuff I've done but I still think it looks really cool and really aged and, and decrepit but yeah let's get to the the painting table I'll show you what I did all right guys here's a look at the model that results from this uh, tutorial so guys we'll be painting this over black primer and the first thing we're gonna do is use stegadon scale green just over the topmost uh, cloak that he's wearing you can hand brush or airbrush this no problem then for the body of the horse and the flesh we're gonna do incubi darkness and I just airbrushed it over I uh, don't have to be too careful about the bone areas and things because we're going to hand paint those later. Uh, you can absolutely just hand brush this if you prefer. I just use the airbrush mostly for speed. Now airbrush or hand brush a little highlight of Sotek green on the raised surfaces and raised areas of that topmost cloak that he's wearing uh, on his back. Now I'm going to do some very light highlights using first Cabalite Green. I'm just airbrushing that on any of the raised areas of the horse's body and sort of the bulging chest area and things like that. And this is intentionally quite a light highlight as I want to retain that darkness. Now the paint nobody seems to find in stores is P3 Eldritch. It's a new paint from Privateer Press and I've been using that on my Night Haunts ethereal smoky areas and with the Knight of Shrouds there's no exception I'm using it here as well you can also hand brush it now again a very light highlight of Sybarite green I'm using an airbrush or you could use some two or three uh, very light glazes to do this I'm just hitting the topmost parts of his body um, things like the tops of hip bones the tops of knee joints and anywhere that the skin is pulled especially tight and that's how I'm creating these again pretty soft highlights in this case for some of the edge highlighting, so to bring out the definition in the ribs and the sharp points of knees and things like that, I actually added some yellow ink to the Sybarite Green airbrush mix I'd been using. Uh, I used about three drops, which made it just a little too watery. So you could probably just do one or two drops. It creates a nice yellowy green glowing effect um, just for, again, the really the highest highlights of his flat. There's really no hope of coating all the... Um, flames you know the ethereals ghostly flames with white uh, and celestial gray with my airbrush so i had to hand brush all of it celestial gray is a nice uh, base coat that'll go on pretty well with one coat pretty common formula for the bone i'm base coating it with zandri dust from gw so that's the front of his legs the uh, or like the four legs the ribs his skull the, the horse's skull and again this just um you know thin it a bit i was using my wet palette and just hand brush in carefully all the bone elements now we want to bring the ghostly flames up to a pure white so i'm using my vallejo white premium primer that i just use a lot um, it's fairly thin so i didn't need to thin it to avoid brush strokes if you're using a, a thicker white you're, you're going to want to thin that down or use your wet palette so you don't get lots of brush strokes and chalkiness but you do want these uh, flames to be white now for the bone, I just go over all the bone areas we base coated with Agrax Earthshade. I use it right out of the pot. As always with a wash you want, or like a shade, you want to use your brush to wick up any of the pooling that you see when it just gets to be too thick. The majority of the metal is going to be this corroded looking old ancient metal, not, not necessarily bronzes and things. And for a base coat on that, I'm using an absolute classic, which is bolt gun metal. 
probably one of the best metallic paints ever. Uh, but nowadays, lead belcher would work fine or any other sort of gun, gun metal color would be fine. Just do a nice smooth base coat. Here's the reason we did the flames in white. We're going to give them a heavy wash with this Hex Wraith Flame uh, technical paint that just came out with the Night Haunts. Gives a nice green flamey look to it uh, over the white. To darken his cloak, we're going to take a shade of Nuln Oil and just brush it right on and really darken down that Sotek green highlight. You've seen me do this before. I'm going to take a silvery color. So in my case, it's an old mithril silver. You could use Stormhose silver. You could use Runefang, Runefang steel. And I'm stippling it onto the raised or prominent areas of the metal as opposed to uh, brushing on highlights or dry brushing. Now we take Ushapti Bone and some Glaze Medium from Vallejo because what we want to do is create sort of a nice slightly blended look to the bone. We want it to go from dark to bright to almost like a bleached bone look um, and just thin it down. It's almost like a one-to-one -one, um, ratio and just carefully brush it on and try not to get it on the horse. When that's dry, the exact same type of step except using Screaming Skull and Glaze Medium. So this is going to be the brightest highlight on the bone, doing things like the horse's cheekbones, the topmost edges of the ribs, the sharp parts of the bones on the legs, etc. Faces and arms on my night haunts are based with underbelly blue, which I've uh, thinned a bit and used on my wet palette. Depending how nice you want your results to be, you could do a careful layering of this. I did a dry brush and it's just Temple Guard blue, creating a nice sharp blue highlight on the sort of turquoisey black that we've done with the cloak. The amazing Typhus Corrosion Technical Paint is next and I'm stippling it on to the various areas of metal, all the metal basically, including the wings on his helmet, the lower to mid point in the sword, tops of the of the horse's helmet and places like that, basically everywhere. I don't think I did it on the chainmail in this case. You could absolutely do so if you want. As each step dries, we're bouncing around the model. So here's a glaze of Lamenter's yellow over the dried Hex Wraith flame. Just creates a nice ethereal look to the flames. The arms we based in underbelly blue are now given a heavy wash of Nylock Oxide. Now I'm going to create like a tarnish glaze or filter. I'm going to use Agrax Earth Shade, just the regular version, not the gloss, as a base. So I put about three or four drops in my, my palette well. Then I'm adding a drop of sepia ink and a drop of yellow ink, both from Vallejo. And that's going to give them this property where they're going to stain the metal and they're not just going to run into the uh, recesses. And you're going to get this nice sort of aged yellowy brown look to the metal and still retain some of the shine in the metal as well, which is good. For the scabbard, I decided to add a little color to the model and I grabbed P3 Beaten Purple, which I don't think I've used for years. And man, that's a really nice purple. It goes on so nice. It's really rich color. Um, looks fantastic. So I could see myself using that purple again. Um, in terms of GW, I know there's, I want to say Xerius Purple or Hex, Hex and Lichen Purple. Anyway, there's purples out there that you can use from GW. Then I come in and I stipple and mix. I mix in a little bone color to lighten it and I stipple that on to create sort of a leathery worn pattern on the scabbard. But then I do wash it with that tarnish mix because I do want to dark it down because dude is undead. Now we just do a quick highlight on his arms with back with the base coat of underbelly blue. You're going to apply that to his elbows, the raised portions of his arms, the fingers and things like that. Paint the rain strap on the horse brown. I used Mornfang. You can use whatever brown you want. I decided to mask off most of the body of the horse and separate it from the ethereal ghostly wisps of smoke that come off his cape because I really wanted to blend this Ulthuan Grey into that Eldritch and to be honest I just felt most comfortable doing that with my airbrush. You can also do it with a series of glazes to, to blend the two regions. I used an airbrush and the end result actually was creating white speckles on the green so I'm going to fix that in a bit. While that was drying, I did do an edge of Necron Goss Blaster Green just on the edges of the green part of the Eldritch part of his smokiness. I need all the adjectives for these parts of this, this model. You can see here I just did a sharp highlight on a few areas. I don't know if this is meant to be black gold or necro gold. It says negro gold. I hate saying that, but um, 
just base coat the various weapon parts, uh, the handles and the scabbard tip and things like that with this color. I say things like that way too often. I apologize. I got to work on that. Um, just to, you know, you could use any kind of gold you want here, something, whatever you dig. And to highlight it, I added a little bit of um, scale 75 thrash metal. That could be similar to a P3 radiant platinum. So it's a sort of ever so slightly yellow silver. Um, but yeah, again, you could use auric gold from GW, but I just didn't want to use a perfectly sort of storm cast gold for this guy because he's meant to be, you know, undead and evil and stuff like that. The tiny hourglass on the scabbard was base coated with warp fiend gray on the two sort of globe parts of it. And then I just put a little highlight of wolf one gray and white just along the bottom. Um, let's say the bottom right quarter of each of the globes to give it him a bit of a shine. So to fix some of the speckling I got when I airbrushed that Ulthuan to create the blend, I mixed a, a glaze of this Eldritch, probably about two parts glaze, one part Eldritch, because it does need to be pretty thin, to, and, and you just build it up over a couple coats to try and transition that Ulthuan into the Eldritch and cover up some of the speckling that did happen, and I think it was mostly successful. And if you didn't have an airbrush, this is kind of how you would do the blending um, in the first place. These videos always end with a bang, an incredible step that just like blows your mind with technique. And in this case, it's a it's a very thin line edge highlight of Skaven Blight Dinge on the horse's hooves to finish him off. It's super exciting. Then I hit anything that was shiny and shouldn't be with matte varnish through my airbrush. And you can also hand brush that stuff. Here's a look at the finished model. I hope you like the result. I really dig how the old ancient looking metal uh, it, it looks without having lots of orange rust for a change, just a different look. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button and sharing with friends. There's more to come. Thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next time.